I worked for 20 years in the U.S. government lab that was working in oil shale development. And after that 20 years, and from this perspective, I now conclude that the name of oil shale will be changed to Leverite, because I think we have a lever right there. <laughs> My interest in LFTR was inflamed when a friend called about the Hargraves and Moore article in the American Scientist. I was absolutely stunned by that article. I don't think that I've ever had any article uh, affect me the way that one particular did. It simply blew me out of the water. And after studying the article in Hargrave's course material, I came up with lost to some 24 comparisons between the boiling water uranium reactor and LFTR, and they all favored LFTR. So later, I got a friend interested and co-opted him into writing a, um, how to use lifter in Wyoming. I wrote part one about LFTR development, and he wrote the part two, which is a position paper written from the perspective of some time in the future. It's written as though uh, it had already been developed and it was heavily used in Wyoming. In other words, uh, science fiction. The first thing you have to realize is that Wyoming lives and dies or has by fuse, uh, fossil fuel and uranium. So we've got, we've got gas, oil, coal, and uh, uranium, but, and also trona, which isn't particularly energy, but uh, those are the main things that are mined in Wyoming. Now, the one that, uh, of all the things in the paper, we want to figure on coal. Because first off, we figured that because the fuel cost is so much cheaper and it's that easy to develop, uh, uh, not easy, but about the same expense when we get going for a reactor, we figured it'd be the absolute death of coal for electric generation. So what would we do with coal? Well, currently they're now talking and there's a company, uh, I think it's four guys that are refugees from Enron that um, are want to take, uh, use coal gasification. Now, coal gasification, you take coal and you put in air and steam and you get one thing, CO2, a lot of it, because your process heat is all coming from the coal and you get carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Well, then you have to take the carbon monoxide and the hydrogen, use the fischer tropsch reaction or something similar, and you get a hydrocarbon and more carbon dioxide because, again, the process heat is coming from uh, your products. So what we propose instead is coal hydrogenation, where you take coal, you'd add hydrogen to that, and you'd get your hydrocarbon. Now, this is only economically feasible. I did talk to a chemical engineer about this, and uh, he didn't have much time, but the one thing he really agreed with is that the reason you don't do this is because hydrogen is so expensive. It would make hardly any carbon dioxide or any other emissions. So uh, let's chase this rabbit uh, down the rabbit hole a little further. We figured that, uh, and this is again from uh, Hargraves and uh, Aim High uh, work that I stole uh, copiously from, is about 500 the cost of coal, so therefore process heat should be oh, much be cheaper. And so we, and he mentions in some of his stuff, uh, cheap hydrogen from the Bunsen reaction. So we said, okay, if that's really true, uh, let, let's uh, just go with this. Here's a quick review of the Bunsen uh, reaction. It's here. About 140 degrees, uh, you uh, break the products down, you get hydrogen from this one at about 400 degrees centigrade, and you get this one from, you uh, get your H2SO4 and break it down, you get oxygen and your SO2 back, and some of your water. Now this may be a little problematical for LFTR, I don't know if we can get this high operating uh, stuff out of uh, your LFTR or not, I'm not sure of that. But the summary is that you start with four hydrogen, you put energy in, and you're going to get two hydrogen and one oxygen back and some of your water back. Okay, well now let's see, talk about coal hydrogen economics. Let's assume that we have 100% conversion, we have this much ton, that amounts to about 450 million short tons of coal, and Wyoming has produced that much coal. Let's uh, say that average, uh, average is 70% carbon, 20% water, and for just the ease of uh, uh, calculation, let's assume that we're, our oil equivalent, or petroleum equivalent, is an 8-carbon diolefin, C8H14, and that that diolefin has a density of about 0.75 kilograms per liter. Okay, well, we take one ton of coal, get this, we take uh, about 200 kilograms of water, and we do water the coal, and we get some of our uh, water that we need uh, from the dewatering the coal, and then we need another 80 kilograms of hydrogen from some other source. So we have 102 kilograms of hydrogen, this, and we wind up with 
802 kilograms, or about 1,070 liters, of our, uh, our um, C8H14. Now, from 408 million metric tons of coal, we can generate about 2.75 billion barrels of oil per year. Well, that'd be almost 7.5 million barrels per day. And currently, the U.S. imports about 19 million barrels, so coal hydrogenation using Wyoming coal only would allow us to cut our oil imports by 40% if all of the liquid product that we produced were to go to do that. Judging from the places where we have to import oil and some of the people that hate our guts, I think that isn't too bad an idea. So let's go on, let's say assuming $100 a barrel, we could produce a revenue stream of about $750 million per day or $275 billion per year. And if it was all to replace imported oil, that would uh, reduce our reduction, uh, equal a reduction in payments of about the same amount. So we think that's a fairly significant uh, uh, thing that it would, if we didn't have that would a big drain on our economy, it would help considerably. Well, now, what do we do for Wyoming tax revenue? Right now, we're just taking an average of about $10 a ton with a 5% severance tax, and that generates about $225 million a year. But if we produced a product with $100 per barrel with a 2% severance tax, it would generate about $5.5 billion a year, or 24 more times our state revenue than we get now, because our product, of course, is so much more valuable than the, than the raw material we're starting with. And even we said, okay, we're not even a tax toll. If coal belongs to Wyoming, and we're going to sell you the coal as your starting process at $10 a ton, it would still make about $4.5 billion a state, or 20 times more than currently. And uh, we figured the estimated total cost of LFDR development would be $5 billion. So with 11 months of tax revenue at 2% of product, or about 110% return on investment, with our assumptions, we'd be the in entire um, LFTR development from Wyoming. However, about two days, I thought, well, you know, uh, this is supposed to be so much better than this. How about hydrogenation uh, or the water requirement? And I bet it's a lot better than it would be uh, otherwise. So let's take a look at that. Unfortunately, we, it's like this. Uh, this is the uh, a very famous cartoon from American Scientist. He says, I think you should be a little more explicit in step two, uh, then a miracle occurs. Uh, because, say, uh, from, again, from Hargraves Moore, uh, about 600 gallons per minute for cooling, 20,000 gallon minutes for evaporation, and our cold hydrogenation would take about this, this much. It would be in the middle. It would be about 24% of the cooling requirement, and it would be seven times the evaporation requirement. Now, the one reason that we didn't do uh, probably one of the main reasons we haven't done, we've done nuclear in Wyoming, maybe not a big enough population for one, but lack of water. Well, Wyoming's a very dry state. So, uh, so gee, how are we going to solve that problem? Well, let's take another flight of fancy, and uh, let's say that we go to the coast, uh, we do desalination of salt water, uh, then we transport that water and do the Bunsen there. Well, the only problem is that I did a, found a calculation on the internet, and I found that we could transport that water to take a 200 megawatt uh, SL uh, salt reactor just to uh, pump the water. Well, then you, you know, you're fiercely thinking, well, how do we get around that? Well, why pump water? Why don't we desalinate the water? We do the Bunsen reaction on the coast and transport hydrogen. Because just from the weight standpoint, hydrogen is a weight of two, water has a weight of 14 or 18, so you're only producing one ninth of the mass of material. That ought to be a huge uh, difference. And uh, then we really went into a high uh, gear here and say, well, what happens? Can we even do the Bunsen reaction without desalination? Now, I'm not a great chemist, but I don't think that probably isn't likely, but it's one, of the, one other possibility. So, uh, like I say, it's quite a fight of fancy, but uh, I think we need to do a lot more of these ideas and start taking what if and then chase these things down and find out how they're going to work. All right. Thank you.